Welcome to Beijing, the capital of the People's Republic of China. This city was the seat of power for the emperors of the Yuan, Ming, and Qing dynasties for 700 years. With an area of about 17,000 square kilometers, Beijing has about 11 million inhabitants, made up of 56 ethnic groups. Since the opening of China to the outside world, Beijing has become one of the main tourist destinations. One of the most popular landmarks in Beijing is Tiananmen Square, which can accommodate up to half a million people at any one time. This is part of the Great Wall of China in Badaleng, which is situated about 70 kilometers from Beijing city center. This 2,500-year-old defensive wall is about 6,000 kilometers in length. The Great Wall, one of the wonders of the world, was a very effective defensive system in the ancient days. As the local saying goes, you are not truly a warrior unless you have scaled the Great Wall. Apart from the Great Wall, the Forbidden City is also another famous historical site of Beijing. Measuring 720,000 square meters, it is now called the Museum of Historical Palace. It was built in the 15th century. During the next 500 years, 24 emperors lived there. The last emperor who graced his presence here was the child emperor, Pu Yi, who ruled from 1908 to 1911. It was said that about one million workers were involved in the building of this palace, which took 14 years to complete, from 1406 to 1420. Apart from Tiananmen Square, the Great Wall, and the Forbidden City, Beijing has numerous other ancient sites which are still intact. Nearly all of them have been recognized as part of the national and world heritage. These prides of China are also sought after by tourists who come to China almost incessantly to look at them. The tourism sector has been given the priority for the last few years. The inflow of outside cash is a significant contribution towards the development of the local economy. Beijing was once known as Peking. We are told that from the 11 million inhabitants of Beijing, 250,000 are Muslims. The majority of them live in an area called Nuji Lane. Yuji is a well-known place in Beijing. Apart from the fact that it is the area of the Muslim minorities, it is also known because of the halal shops and an old mosque which is hundreds of years old. Our search for Yuji was quite easy because nearly all the people we asked directions from knew where it is. Yuji is one of the early Muslim settlements which has been here for about a thousand years. Today, Yuji is packed with Muslim houses, restaurants, and small shops, which sell the local needs. Yuji Mosque is never without a worshipper. Muslims from all walks of life come here for prayers or just to read the Quran. Every week, around 20,000 worshippers attend the Friday congregational prayers. This shows that Islam is still strongly practiced in this region. The new Ji Mosque was built in 996, during the reign of the Song dynasty. The calligraphy of Quranic verses harmonizes with the colors red, gold, 
green and blue. Etchings with floral themes, especially of the lotus, have become a symbol of identity for the Chinese. These elements are similarly used in many different mosques in China. Apart from basics such as prayers and fasting, the local Muslims give great emphasis to religious schools. The mosque usually becomes the main religious school in areas where there are no specific religious schools or classes. After visiting the Dongji Mosque, we visited the Nuji Mosque. Apart from us, the Nuji Mosque also has another group of Malaysian guests from Johor, who are currently touring China. The history of Islam in Beijing is so closely knitted to the mosque that tourists, be they Muslim or not, will almost surely be brought here by their guides to see the Muslim minorities. Nuji Mosque has also received visits from numerous VIPs from other countries. One of the interesting features of this mosque is its lunar observation minaret. Later it was used for reciting prayer calls. Today, however, the five times a day prayer calls are made only from the mosque's courtyard. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah Hayya The Nuji Mosque is the oldest and biggest mosque in Beijing. It was built by a Muslim named Nasruddin. Nasruddin was said to be an educated Arab man and had served as a senior officer in the government of the Liao dynasty. Nuji Mosque, which resembles the classical Chinese palace, was once very small. It was later renovated and enlarged several times during the era of the Ming and Qing dynasties, from 1368 to 1191. In 1474, the Ming emperor named this mosque Li Bai Si, which means the prayer hall. The new Ji is the only mosque left in China, which is still called Li Bai Si, while others are now called Qing Chan Si, which means a place of prayers, purity and truth. To the Imam of Nuji Mosque, Haji Ibrahim Zhu Tianli, 63, the happiest moment in his life is when the mosque is visited by many people, especially from abroad. Built on a 6,000 square meters land, the mosque also provides other facilities such as religious classes, administration offices, souvenir shops and an ablution room. Lebesi 
has been the imam of this mosque since 1981. He sat for a special imam course conducted by the previous imam. About 20,000 worshippers gather here to pray on Fridays. At other prayer times, the prayer hall is also filled with worshippers. The area surrounding the mosque has become the pulse of the local inhabitants in Beijing. Muhammad Ali, 67, is visiting New Ji Lane, although he is not staying in the neighborhood. If he has the time, Muhammad Ali will surely go to the mosque for congregational prayers, especially on Fridays. He likes to come to this lane because the mosque is situated nearby. Apart from that, he can get his groceries and some halal meat easily here. It is estimated that around 20,000 Muslims who frequent this mosque every Friday have helped the business of Omar Pai Ji Gang's family tremendously. We asked Omar what makes him decide to work here. According to him, his shop is visited by hundreds of customers every day. Omar likes to live in Nuji because the area is clean and most importantly, halal food is easy to get. Nuji is very special to him. It is here that Islam got a foothold in Beijing about a thousand years ago. And to Omar, he strongly believes that Islam will always flourish in this unique part of Beijing. Kashi, or Kashgar, is our next destination. It is situated in Xinjiang, an autonomous region of the Muslim Uyghurs. 40% of Xinjiang is mountainous. The Altai, Dian Shan and Kunman ranges have a significant effect on Xinjiang's weather. Rivers and lakes are the irrigation sources for the oasis here. The Xinjiang district is the last frontier of the Chinese Republic to the west. Xinjiang, endowed by the Almighty with various terrains, forms the Chinese border with eight neighbors. They are Mongolia, Russia, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and India. A visit to the Xinjiang district is not complete without a stop, however brief, in Kashgar. Kashgar, once known as Shuli, was the first city established in southern Xinjiang. It boasts 200,000 inhabitants, divided into about 30 different ethnic groups. 75% of this historical city's dwellers are Muslim Uyghurs. They use the Arabic alphabet as their official writing. Since the beginning of Beijing's open door policy, international communities are given the chance to see the uniqueness and diversified cultures of the various ethnic groups which are part of the 1.2 billion inhabitants of China. The Chinese government has given the freedom to all 56 ethnic groups to practice their own religion, culture and language. In Kashgar, the use of the Arabic script is so widespread that you feel you are not in China at all. A majority of the Uyghurs speak Turkish Altay and use the Arabic script in official communications. Although Islam officially entered mainland China in the 7th century AD, remote provinces in Xinjiang, including Kashgar, only received it in the 10th century. Kashgar was once the center of administration for the renowned Karakhan dynasty. As soon as the Sultan Bugela Khan embraced Islam, Kashgar became a center of Islamic expansion 
followed by other cities such as Aksu and Kukra. Abu Khaili, a Uyghur farmer, is proud of the history of Kashgar, where he was born. He is grateful to the Almighty because the Islamic religion is still strong here and he can live peacefully with the other ethnic groups. The Uyghurs are cattle breeders, hawkers and farmers. Abu Khaili plants rice and wheat. He also sells groceries to bolster his income. With an income of about 17,000 wands a year, Abu Khaili manages to build a modest life and to have a comfortable home situated about half a kilometre from his paddy field. At home, Abu Khaili's wife, Tajinsa, makes sure that her husband and son's needs are met. Abu Khaili has eight children, five boys, three females. This means that he has to work extra hard to support his large family. However busy he may be at work, Abu Khaili is sure to return home to rest and perform his religious duties. Abu Khaili's house, situated in the Shifu district, Kashgar, was built by the local community 10 years ago. His family and relatives have been living in this village for generations. In keeping with tradition, all Uyghur dwellings have courtyards, whether big or small. These courtyards are adorned with flower plants or fruit trees. A Uyghur's house is usually adorned with wood carvings, which are influenced by Central Asian culture. Abu Khaili's house, for example, also displays a landscape theme. This environmental theme shows the close bond between the Uyghurs and the God-given earth. Truly, this closeness of the Uyghurs with their natural surroundings is inseparable. Likewise, their relationship with the Creator. The word Uyghur means unity. To Abu Khaili's family, the unity of the Uyghur begins with the closeness of family members at home. During the free time, Abu Khaili's family will meet to inquire about each other's health and to feast together, usually on traditional dishes such as tea and sweets. About 80% of the 7.2 million Uyghurs in China live in Xinjiang. Abu Khaili is a symbol of the determination of the Uyghurs, a race that once contributed significantly to China. The Uyghurs once helped the Chinese emperor to foil the rebellion of General An Lushan, who betrayed the emperor during the Ming dynasty. Moreover, during the 13th century, some Uyghurs had risen to top positions, helping Emperor Yuan to govern his provinces. Abu Khaili is determined to follow in the footsteps of his ancestors. Center. 
This 2,500-year-old defensive wall is about 6,000 kilometers in length. The Great Wall, one of the wonders of the world, was a very effective defensive system in the ancient days. As the local saying goes, you are not truly a warrior unless you have scaled the Great Wall. Apart from the Great Wall, the One of the most popular landmarks in Beijing is Tiananmen Square, which can accommodate up to half a million people at any one time. This is part of the Great Wall of China in Badaleng, which is situated about 70 kilometers from Beijing city. <laughs> Welcome to Beijing, the capital of the People's Republic of China. This city was the seat of power for the emperors of the Yuan, Ming and Qing dynasties for 700 years. With an area of about 17,000 square kilometers, Beijing has about 11 million inhabitants, made up of 56 ethnic groups. Since the opening of China to the outside world, Beijing has become one of the main tourist destinations.